All right, how's it, guys? Um, it's Desk Toy back with another tutorial for you guys. This one comes in from a request from Visual. Um, he asked, "How do I create more organic mechanical shapes um, in Cinema 4D?" Like, I did a, I did a tutorial on hard surface modeling in the past, um, but that was mainly to do with like guns and like very rigid, very rigid things, like. This would be an example of kind of what I've taught how to make in Cinema 4D. Like, it's very, very hard edges, some bevels here and there, and just like... It's very rigid, though. It's not, like, curvy and sleek. He asked, how would I make something sleek, like a car? Um, as you can see, in a car, there's a lot more, like... It's very smooth, there's a lot more curves to it, it looks sexy and just fine. Um, so, I've got to admit, I've never actually done this before. So I did, I did a little toying around and um, I managed to come up with a technique that kind of works. So I'm going to teach you guys what I just figured out right now. Um, as you can see, look, it's a, it's a pretty nice piece that I made. It's for the bonnet of the car. Um, I, I think it's a pretty nice piece. I don't know about you. Um, but yeah, that's the front piece of the car that I created. What you're going to need before you start this is a reference image of the car that you're going to make. Um, there's a thread or... An article on CG Frog. I'll link it in the description, where you can get very nice um, for cars. You want you want something like this where you can see like the front, the side, and the top. Preferably front side and the top. Um, you don't really need the back. This this maybe not this one, but like uh, this one's very nice. You get like the side view, the top view, the front view. It doesn't matter where they are in the picture as long as they're there, and as long as they're in scale. Uh, you want it to definitely be in scale for what you're doing. Um, I actually downloaded the Audi R8, which is over here, on the same side. You don't need the measurements or anything, just as long as it has the line work and it's accurate. It does have to be accurate, otherwise you're going to be doing a lot of guesswork and it's going to look pretty meh. So, um, once you have that, I've downloaded it to my desktop over... Downloaded it over here. See, hello. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, why is it opening in Internet Explorer? Anyway, no. Oh, jeez. Um, anyway, so I, I've got the image here. Um, they're all set up. I'm going to close that before it gives me ours. Um, and you're going you're gonna to want that. So I'm going to show you how to set it up now, um, and then I'm going to come back into this project to show you guys how to actually use the picture to create your 3D image. Or not your 3D image, what the hell. 3D mesh. So I'm just going to start a new one. This is what you guys will be doing. And then you're going to want to middle click to go into your four views over here. We are going to be using these four views a lot. So get used to middle clicking and selecting all your things. If you middle click on one of the panels, it goes into the full view of that panel. So you can see I middle clicked on the front there and it does all that. What we're going to do is we are going to go to um, options in one of the panels. So like over here. And we're going to go to configure. Now, under configure, uh, there'll be a lot of little things over here on the side. So there's display, filter, view, back, HUD, stereoscopic. Don't worry about any of those, just go back. Um, that, that's basically saying what, what image is being shown behind it. We're going to um, make our, make our Cinema 40 into a window. If that's still selected, we're going to drag in our reference image. So mine is R8. So bam, there we go. You can see it popped up over here. Um, it didn't create a material with the texture or anything, it just it just takes it straight onto there. It doesn't clutter up anything else. Um, it's very nice to use. So this is the right view. Um, I'm, just, I'm actually just going to do this quickly with all the other views, so configure for that one. Uh, actually, you don't, need to, you don't need to click configure all the time. You can just, with um, the configure being selected, just click on another window and it takes you to the configure for that window. So you can see over here. Um, for the front, the right, and then the top. You can just click on top and then there. So now we've got the, Im the image in our three sections, and we need to line them up now. Um, I'm actually just going to take down the opacity for all of these to like 85 because it gets a little confusing if you work with 100% opacity. Um, it's actually 15% opacity, but it, it, it's, it, ran, it says transparency, so it works in the opposite way. Oh, yeah, yeah, you get it. Hopefully. So what we're going to do now is we are going to we are going to line all these. I'm actually just going to close this. We're going to line all of these up. 
Um, so we can see on the right view, we're going to be focusing on this part of the drawing over here, this um, this side view of the car. I just middle clicked on the window there. So we're going to try line it up so that the wheels, this bottom line, is on the ground plane. The ground plane is basically your zero point. You'll see over here where the green and the blue lines meet. Um, that's your Y and your Z value. That is zero, zero, zero in the world. So we're going to take up the wheels to the zero and the Y value. We can do that by going into the, the offset over here and just dragging it up until it's right up there. It's about 39 in this picture. You can see it's there. Lines up nicely. Um, we're going to keep this pretty much in the middle where it is now. It doesn't really matter um, how, how far forward or backwards it is, just how high it is. Um, then we're going to go into the next one, uh, which is front. We're going to be focusing on front view over here. So this one, I'm going to have to move it over to the right and then down. So we do that by making it over like that, and we're going to line up the middle with this green line. So we're going to have to look at uh, this middle piece over here. I'm, I'm looking at the middle of the logo. So I'm going to click and, until it gets to the middle-ish, and it doesn't actually go into the middle properly. So I'm going to go uh, 1, 2, ah, 2, 2, 1 1.5, and then that takes it like right to the middle. So now we're going to take this down. Um, we're going to get the wheels on the ground line again. Take it down, just to... There. Yeah, pretty good. So now that one's all lined up. Now we're going to go to the top view, and we're going to do the same with the top kind of view of the... You get the idea by now, hopefully. Um, and since this is already lined up to be... Like the, the back of the bump over here is like on the same axis as the back of the bumper in the top picture. So they already lined up. Um, that's very nice to have if it's already done in the picture. If not, then you're going to have to do a little bit of adjusting here and there. Um, just make every, make sure everything fits in. If you've worked in um, engineering graphics, graphics and design or technical drawing or something like that, um, think of this like if, you're a high, if you've did that in high school or something, think of this as your front left and top views, like FLT and you draw the 45 degree angle. Or just, I don't know. Maybe that's just with my school um, in South Africa, but that's a good way to think about it. So we're going to move this up to, we're going to try to get the middle of the um, middle of the logo on the, I don't know, the x-axis, that's it. So yeah, we're going to look at this line over here, pick it up, and actually go, so I'm going to go 0.5, there we go, it lines up nicely, and there we go, that is our top view done. And that's all you really need to do to set it up and then you can just go. Um, so I'm, I'm going to take it back. This is what I did and then I created the top bonnet. I created the top bonnet and then it turned out like this. You can see when I go into my views it you can see it lines up all nicely and yeah that's that's what I made. So um, I did that, and then I did the technique that I'm about to show you. So I'm just going to turn this off because I want to kind of keep it there so you can see um, a bit more of the finished product once this tour is over. But I'm going to be starting from scratch for... I'm going to be working on this bottom piece to show you. Like around the... I always want to call those the eyes, the lights of the car. It looks like a face to me. It's eyes, cheeks, and then a mouth there. Not like cars when they made the eyes and the windshield, they looked horrible. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna, gonna turn this off real quick so we don't see that. So now we're starting from scratch, essentially. Um, what we're gonna do to start is we are going to just create a single polygon. So I'm gonna hold down the selection over there and then go polygon. If that, there you go, polygon. Uh, we're going to keep it as a quad. You can click triangle, but I would suggest against it because when you subdivide something, triangles don't work too nicely. So we just got a polygon. It's got four um, corners, which has got four little points in it. Uh, it's pretty simple. I'm just going to move this into place. Um, so yeah, let's just move it up here. Move it in our different uh, views and everything. And just get it to line up. I'm going to start from the middle over here. That's where the things seem to join up. And I'm just going to rotate it just like 
that ish. I'm not going to make this too accurate. Like you can do more detail if you want to, but um, this this technique does take quite a while. So for the sake of keeping this tutorial relatively short with the content that we're covering, I'm going to make it a little bit less detail. Once you've got it vaguely lined up, um, I'm actually just going to take it as the halves because we can just put it in symmetry afterwards. Uh, scale it. Um, I'm just going to take it as the side. Once it's done, once you've got it like roughly in position, press C, and you'll see it be at ease. No, it is editable. Um, now what we're going to do is we're just going to move all the points down. So we're just going to move down to there, there. Um, what you kind of do is you work in one view at a time. So I'm working in this view, and then I'm going to go to the top view, and I'm going to line it up there. So you kind of you just want to stick them to the. This is actually way too um, too big. I'm going to move this over a bit. Um, you want to work in one view at a time and just kind of get everything lined up in their respective axes. I can you move this over here. So now that's that's technically right. Um, oh wait, no. I'm gonna end up the bottom. There we go. There we go. So now that's right. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna expand off of this. I'm go into edge mode. Select the right edge that we want to move along. I right click, extrude, and then just move that along. I'm gonna press space to go back into select mode, and then go to points. And then just move it along. And this is all you have to do. Just extrude and move them along. Just like I'm working in these these two things now because I can't get much information from this side because they're all very close together and stuff. Um, just gonna go into edge mode, right click, extrude, drag it along a bit, point mode. I'm just gonna this along here. It actually needs to come down a bit, and you you just do this. This is the technique I found. And someone else is pro someone else probably works like this. This is how I saw another person do it. I didn't see a tutorial by them, but um, I don't really know. Um, this is kind of just how I saw they did it in their speed art. So I kind of tried to adopt that and make it my own. I'm probably making some mistakes, um, but I'm not a professional. I'm just a hobbyist. I'd like to be a professional, that'd be great. I'm just gonna move along. And at this point I'm not gonna um, take this point up here because I'm just gonna create a new line of polygons extruding from the top of this one. I'm just gonna move this along like to that area over there. Move it along here. And we're actually just gonna with this one now. And what I tend to do is just kind of create a line of them um, edited in one view and then edited in another. So I'm just going to create a bunch of these and then line them up just so I don't have to keep on swapping between them. And then doing this one down here, that one, two there, and bam, we got that. Um, now you can see it's horribly out of line on this one, so we're just going to go select each of them in here. Uh, it seems pretty much in line. We're just, you can see, I'm just trying to line it up with this line over here. It, it's kind of hard to do because a lot of the lines converge there, and it's a very thick, it's one like thick line. But just use your judgment and kind of work things out. So you can see I'm lining it up like that. There you go. And then line it up in that corner there. Just 
Mm. You like that? Yeah. And then the last one. Yeah. I mean, you can kind of see where it's going. Like it, it, it's creating the shape that R would be. Um, and then you just go along and do that a lot, a lot. Um, go along with this one now. Extrude. Also there. Ooh. And then just move it along. It's nice to have music um, when you're doing this, so it's just you do that. But I don't want to get like sued my pants off for copyright. So yeah, that's fun. I'm actually just going to move all of these up to the first line because I will do that bit of detail because it does kind of matter. Just like that. Go back. And I'm just going to do the same thing that I did before, extrude a bunch of them. Yeah, that's fine. And Roughly there. You can see I'm I'm kind of not trying to rush through this, but get it done pretty quickly. So I'm not trying to be very accurate with all my points. Like I could improve on a lot of these things. Um, but yeah, just for the sake of the tutorial, oh, it's just you you literally just sit down for a good few hours and just get everything nice and accurate because. When things do look accurate, they look very professional and good. So I highly suggest that. You can see I'm just lining it up in one axis first, um, and then I'll go into the other axis over here. You can see it's way off. I'm gonna have to curve it around over there. Um, yeah. And if you guys know of a better way to do this, uh, feel free to tell me in the comments. I'll make another video about it and I'll let people know about it. Um, but I, li I literally got asked this question hours ago and then I had to go to gym, study, and then high school stuff. So, yeah, um, I just had to crank. I'm just doing this pretty quickly so I don't forget about it. Because um, I try to answer questions as fast as possible uh, whenever I can. Like if you guys have a question about Cinema 4D and all, and all that, or animation in general, um, I will I will literally try to get that video out in that within 24 hours, so that the question that you're asking is still relevant, still actually matters what I say. Not like asking and then like six months later, like oh yeah you can do this, and then you're like oh thanks I already solved that problem, shot. Um, so yeah, I try to help as quickly as possible so that. Questions are still relevant. So, if you guys have anything to ask, feel free. Yeah, it's it's not much to talk about while this is going on. It's just actually tedious work. Oh crap! I should have looked up some jokes to tell you guys while this is going on. I actually liked it pretty well. There you go, you can see I've lined it up all nicely in there, and I'll just have to come into this kind of section over here and line it up. So, I should just work in lines on this. Yep. Um, now, you want to work in world space when you're doing this, by the way. So, when you press W, you can see it kind of goes off axis over there. You press, w, um, press W again, so it's like Y is always up, Z is always back, and X is always right. Um, it just makes things a lot better. You can see, just doing this, just chugging away at it. And you can see, even in this one, it's starting to line up nicely. Um, and actually, yeah, I can actually use this one to line it up. Actually, yeah, I see. It's getting a bit lost there. This actually comes along here. There. Alright, so now I actually have to go into point mode and do this. 
and I'm using the the sphere over here now, the right view. And just selecting each of the points, and you can see when I when I'm moving along this axis, it doesn't affect the front view at all. It's because the front view is working with the z the z axis and the y axis. It doesn't work with the x axis at all. Um, so affecting the x axis won't affect anything in the front view, which is why we're lining it up in the first two axes with, and then going into down the view for the third axis. Words. So hopefully you understand how that works. I can see I'm lining up the um, the thingamajig. The lines, lining up the points of the line. So you can see how important this drawing becomes. It becomes literally how you're going to draw out your piece. Uh, Alright, cheers. Okay. Yeah, just make sure you keep it to the lines as much as possible. I don't, I don't, I'm not one for like conforming children and telling them like always oh, colour within the lines, but when you're working with something something mechanical and you're working with a reference image, you kind of want to keep it pretty accurate. Um, so yeah. You guys can... Uh, I'll try to leave an annotation in the video um, or in it so you can see... I mean, it's probably already gone by by now. Um, but so you can see when this piece is, when this part is done. Actually, it's kind of pretty much done. So yeah, you can see I've lined everything up nicely over there. Um, you can see in the 3D view, it's coming along pretty nicely. Um, you, can, you can kind of see the, the shape of the front bit of the car. Um, you'll see it even more when I turn on the bonnet like that. You can see the front of the body. That's working out pretty nicely, I think, if I do say so myself. And we're keeping it pretty low poly, and the topology is very well done. Um, the edge flow is very nice, if you know what that means and all that. So, I mean... It's a pretty nice thing to work on. Like it, it is a nice way to just kind of waste some time, but like kind of spend some time just working on a project calmly and getting everything worked out. You, you can just sit down with like one of those little mixes that you can find on YouTube. Um, yeah, or just chill. Have a have a good few hours. Get a get yourself a beer. I don't know. Just enjoy. Um, so we've done that little part over here. Now we're going to move. We're going to create all these little details in the bottom, which is going to be so much fun. Um, so what we're going to do with that is we're just going to go into edge mode and select all the bottom lines like this. Do do do. Da, 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 da. Um, and extrude back down a little bit, and the process begins again. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. This is gonna take a while. Maybe these first two lines have actually lined up pretty nicely. Um, I will link the guy who I saw use this technique in the description. He doesn't do tutorials. Um, um, I didn't check if he did tutorials, but the, um, the video that I saw was just his speed art of cars. He does very freaking good models of cars, so yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Actually, this goes under the piece, so yeah, this is going to be a bit confusing. Um, So as long as you can visualize how the car will look in 3D, you should be fine with this. Like, um, I mean, it isn't the hardest thing to do in the world, but it is, it is a bit of a challenge. I know a lot of people do struggle with looking at a 2D image and visualizing in 3D. I mean, this is a lot easier because you can you can visualize that this is a car when you look at the picture. Um, but a lot of people they they can't. I don't know. They don't necessarily get how to do that. Um, so I mean, yeah, if, if that's you, then I don't know, trust the image and trust that it'll, it'll make itself into 3D. Um, yeah. 
Actually, boy, I don't even what's going on here. Not too sure. Um, I often just look back at this uh, picture over here to just get an idea of what's going on. Um, oh, okay, I see. Yeah. So yeah, keep keep a keep an keep an image open of the car that you're modeling, like a like a full mass image like this, so you can look back at it if you're not sure, like what the hell is going on with these lines, like. I had in my mind this line doesn't correspond with this line, you're like, I don't understand this. Just take a look at the image and it, 9 out of 10 times it'll clear things up. Ugh. I got that sentence out pretty fast because I had to burp. That's a piece of information that you never asked for. So I'm going to move this other piece down here. Just line it up like that. Um, I do want to start doing some speed arts um, on my channel if you guys are interested in that. Uh, like I've I've seen some very nice Cinema 4D speed art of uh, it's, I think it's Istanbul, not too sure, um, in like a very future year, and, and that stuff was really inspiring to me. So I want to I want to kind of check that out and see if I can do that. Um, so now we, what we kind of have to do is join these two things up. You can use the polygon paint for this. Um, so just kind of the way it snaps sometimes. Let's get that out and do that. Yep. Um, yeah, I've got to line these up. So, line it up like that. And you kind of just have to use your discretion as to where the things will meet up when there's no line to actually follow, um, or like how far, far along a line it'll have to be. Um, hopefully you guys can work that out. Just kind of use your discretion about things. So now when, when, I don't know, this is pretty much, not complete, but it's pretty near completion, um, the mesh. What I like to do is, I like to um, kind of, you can see when we look at it around, there's like some bumps here and there. Um, we could go and smooth those up manually, but there's a very nice um, tool called the brush tool that you can find under mesh, uh, create, transform tools, and brush. Uh, what you do is you go to smooth, or you go to the mode and you say smooth, and then you just crank down the radius a lot. So it's just like a tiny little radius like that. Uh, make sure no points are selected as well, otherwise it won't work. Um, uh, actually, yeah, because we do want our boundaries to be where they are. So maybe do select the boundaries. So I'll press U L over here and select boundary loop. So we got the boundary over there. We want those to stay still. Now we want to select the inverse of this. So we're going to say U F, and then that doesn't work on point mode. Um, can we say invert selection? Selection. Invert selection. Yes, there you go. So we want to we want to smooth out these points, not the not the other points. So we're going to go back into mesh, transform tools, brush, make sure it's on smooth, get the radius all right, um, and then just smooth it out. So you'll see it's not affecting the boundaries at all; it's just smoothing out these other pieces over here. You just click and drag furiously, and there you go. It's all smoothed. So you can see how nice that looks. Um, so now I'm just going to make sure this is what we want to finish off with because I'm gonna I'm gonna make like extrude it a little bit. Um, but once you've extruded it, you can't necessarily edit as much as nicely. Um, yeah, I think that's I think it's pretty good. It lines up pretty nicely with the other one as well, because I mean we did work off the same image. Um, I'm not gonna go into like the headlights and stuff because that isn't exactly what I'm trying to teach in this tutorial. Um, I'm just kinda trying to teach how to do the smooth parts of the car. So you can see it lines up pretty nicely there. Um, so I'm going to go into my 3D view. I'm going to go into polygon mode. And make sure none of them are selected or all of them are selected. It doesn't matter. Um, oh, that's that's a bit of an issue. Um, if you see anything like this where polygons don't line up properly, click it. Uh, say, say reverse normal, um, and then it's fine. Um, or you can say select all of them and say align normals, and then it does the same thing. It's just so that they're all facing the same way. Um, so with all of them selected, go to right click, say extrude, 
and we're just going to make this a tiny little extrusion just so it has some depth to it. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but well, I mean, you don't have to do any of this stuff if you don't want to, but it's just nice to have. It's like a nice little extrusion like that, just tiny, tiny, tiny. Just so there's some kind of depth there, so like when, uh, when you look at it, there you can see some light shines off the corner there. That's how it would look in real life because there is some depth to everything in real life. Nothing is ever truly flat. Um, so that's pretty nice. We are going to shove this whole thing in a subdivision to make it look pretty. And bam. Um, you can see these corners, uh, they're not supposed to be that smooth. Um, so I'll show you how to do that now. Uh, yeah. Actually, actually, no. Before you extrude, I'm just going to undo all of this. Um, before you extrude, you need to make it symmetry. So I'm just going to shove this whole thing in a symmetry. Pop it in there. And there you can see, we've got it on both sides. You can see how, how it would look like a car. And look, go on the symmetry, press C. Yeah, sorry, I was just looking through the settings there. Um, drag out the mesh and then delete the null. Da -da -boop. Easy ease. Um, go into the polygon. And now I need to join this middle section that we created before. And again. So, how we're going to do that is we're going to go into point mode. We're going to go into select and unclick only select visible elements. And then we're just going to select these two middle bits. Like that. Press T. And you're just going to keep on dragging down to like roughly 0%. This what this is doing is that it's it's essentially yeah you're only dragging in the the x-axis and don't, don't drag like that otherwise it's just going to go down to infinity. Um, what this is doing is it's getting the points actually closer to each other um, until they're so close that it's the distance is negatable. And then you right click oh, with all them still selected you right click come on what the hell right click and you say optimize. And that's just going to join them. Um, so I'm going to going to click only select those little elements on again. So now if we choose this one, it's going to move. You can see it's going to move both of these lines. It's because those two points that were there, they're now one point. Yeah. Optimize is a very nice tool to use, so I use it. Right, so now we're going to go and select all of them, and we're going to do that extrusion again. Extrude just a little bit like that. And now we want to define these edges. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into edge mode, uh, make sure nothing's selected, so just go into select mode and just click anywhere else, and then we're just going to go into those edges that we want to define. So up here, like that, and then make sure you do it on both sides, like that, and maybe up here as well. Yeah, I actually should have done with this piece over here, but I don't know. Maybe I'll go back and do it. Maybe I won't. Be down here as well. Yep. Yeah. There we go. And then that corner. Oh, jeez. That corner. That's a really weird corner. I might have to go and redo that again. Nah. And here we go. Wait, no, there's more. Here we go. And just make sure everything's symmetrical. And then once you have the uh, the edges that you want to define when it's subdivided, just um, look at them very closely. And right click and say bevel. Make sure limit is clicked on, checked. And then just bevel it ever so slightly, just like that. And then, yeah. Everything should be dandy. So now, now ladies and gentlemen, we can shove this whole thing in a subdivision and it'll be smooth as F and it'll look pretty. So you can see when we render it out, render it out with the other piece enabled. You can see it looks like it looks like a car. Woo! Look at that, it's a car. You can use your imagination. Um but yeah, that's that's essentially how you model the smooth pieces for a car. Um, yeah, you don't have to use a subdivision if you don't want to, but I just find that it makes everything a lot smoother and looks very nice. Um, yeah, like you, you can you can see where everything would be, like the windshield would be up here, the wheels would be up here, lights, mouth. Um, yeah, I know it's not the mouth. Um, 
but yeah, that that is essentially how I would create the smooth pieces for the car. All that. I did the same um, story for the the the, the bonnet um, um, to uh, create it. You can see when I turn it on, um, it follows the topology very nicely of everything. And yeah, this is a very nice way to actually model it. Um, it, it does create very nice curves and very nice edge flows and all, all that good stuff. So yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. Um, feel free to email me at desktoystudios at gmail.com or anything that you are wondering. I'm very open for criticism and questions and comments and love and joy and happiness and anything that you guys want to tell me, feel free don't hold back. Um, yeah. yeah, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Cheerio.